I work at the Archie Bray Foundation, a world-renowned institution for the ceramic arts. As part of our effort to support the artist residents and to stay afloat financially as a nonprofit, one sector of the foundation is the clay business, which sells everything you need to make clay art. We also make about 15 different clays on site. This clay that I'm working with now, my favorite ever, cannot be bought at the Archie Bray. In fact, as far as I know, I'm the only human who's ever used this particular clay. I dug this clay in Idaho myself. I sieved out the large stones and pine needles, but other than that, I'm using it exactly as it was straight out of the ground. And it feels amazing. It's creamy and smooth, and I'm using it quite stiff and dry, much drier than any clay you would buy. I can do that because it's so plastic that even with little water, it holds up. When it's too wet, it just kind of wants to flop over, and in this regard it's similar to porcelain. But honestly, I find that this wild clay has much better structure than porcelain. When it's the right consistency, it feels like it would be harder to mess up than to make a thin walled pot. And unlike pure white porcelain, it's this gorgeous orange color. When it's fired, it'll turn red, and the hotter it's fired, the darker it gets, passing through bright red at cone 6, toasty brick red a little hotter, all the way to dark brown at cone 10. The clay has some organic remnants in it. They look like mostly decomposed pine needles to me, all these little black lines. And considering I dug the clay from under pine trees, I think that's likely what it is. When it's fired, these organics burn out, leaving behind an interesting texture. It's very smooth, but has these little voids in it, which look kind of like the lines you get from trimming a groggy clay, but it's smooth. This clay shrinks a lot. That's the trade-off for really plastic clay. I suspect that this is a bentonitic clay with a high iron content. To avoid cracking, I have to dry it very slowly and make sure the walls are of an even thickness. I'm not a purist in any regard, and certainly not when it comes to making stuff with fancy dirt. But there's something special about working with clay that just came straight out of the ground, by your own hand, with no additives. By comparison, manufactured clay bodies always feel so pampered. It's like they're always saying, oh, look at me, I'm so smooth and easy to work with. I'm a dull gray. They're like someone's hands who's never worked manual labor. No calluses, no character. What's interesting about this clay is that it really is a joy to work with. I'm not just romanticizing some crappy, sandy clay. It's genuinely amazing. And I didn't make it or buy it. I just found it. There's an important difference between the concepts of agency and autonomy. When we talk about freedom, a lot of people implicitly refer to autonomy, getting what you want when you want it with relative ease. But I think that a greater virtue is agency. Agency is earned when we develop skills. When you drive a car, you have autonomy. You can go wherever you want without having to expend much energy. But what happens when the car breaks down? Well, now you can't get where you want to be. You rely on someone else to fix it, and it may take a long time or cost a lot of money or come at an inconvenient time so that you miss an important engagement. But if you have the skill to fix it yourself and get back on the road, well, that's agency. In the ceramic industry, there have been a lot of supply chain issues, people not able to get the things they're used to getting, and they're really feeling the hurt because they've relied on this sort of value of autonomy, of being able to purchase the product that you want, rather than being able to actually make or find it on your own. Because agency means interacting with the world around us in a way that doesn't elevate us and our human desires above the physical reality of the world. In ceramics, a lot of people want to buy the thing they want, the perfect clay that never cracks and is super easy to work with and is pure white and cheap and abundant, or a glaze that's the exact shade of a poppy flower, or of a stormy sea off the coast of Maine in December. And companies and manufacturers try to meet that need, making ever more options for people to buy. But all of that is striving for autonomy, 
buying the components and putting them together with as little engagement with the materials as possible. Agency, on the other hand, is a deep engagement with the materials. Want to make some giant, complex shape with a smooth white clay? Well, you're going to have to develop your skills to be able to accomplish that. Want just the right shade of glaze color? Learn about glaze chemistry and test and try alternative methods of firing and test again. Agency takes time and effort, but in the end, it's a matter of developing as people, not just achieving some end. Each wild clay I dig is distinct. They all present different challenges and different advantages. I haven't made a lot with this clay, although I love it so much, because the color that I like most for this clay is achieved somewhere around cone 7 or 8. It's an unusual temperature to fire to, and to fire these pieces to that temperature, I first have to develop a glaze that works at that temperature, if I want them to be functional bowls. And speaking of glaze, I have to find a glaze that adds to the aesthetic of this clay rather than covering it up. If we're up to me, I just make everything out of the raw clay itself, but to be functional, it has to be durable and watertight, so it needs a glaze. I could make purely decorative work, but I value functionality. All of that is to say that in order to get what I want with this clay, I need to put in more time and effort. I need agency, not autonomy. I need to engage with this material more and more until I can work with it as an equal and not to simply use it for my ends, like some sort of delusional god figure. Anyway, I just wanted to say, embrace the challenge of working with your materials. That's kind of the point. <laughs> Stuff is so nice. 